Hi everyone and welcome to today's video which is all about microorganism cultures. So what we're going to be looking at in this video is the spec reference 6.2.1G part 1 which is how to culture microorganisms effectively using these aseptic techniques. So first thing we need to do then is understand what on earth we mean by aseptic technique. Now in terms of our aseptic technique, this is what we're going to be using to avoid contamination by any unwanted bacteria or fungi. In terms of what that looks like in reality, so what will we be doing to actually adhere to this aseptic technique, you can get away with some of these really quite simple things because what we could be asked about on our exam paper are certain steps that we would take to avoid this contamination during a microbiology practical. And what we usually find is that each of these bullet points is usually an individual marking point. OK, I'll point out any differences as we go through. So first one is you can wash your hands or you can wear gloves. You will not get two marks if you were to say wash hands on one line and wear gloves on another because to all intents and purposes, we're just avoiding contamination from your skin in both cases. So both of those same marking point, only pick one. We can disinfect work surfaces. We can also work next to a Bunsen burner. Now, there's some very interesting phrases people have written over the years about what this does. It's not sterilizing the air of the lab, OK, by having a single Bunsen burner in a lab that is many square meters in size. We are not sterilizing the air through some miraculous invention here. What it's actually doing is when we've got our little Bunsen flame, so you've got your little Bunsen flame here. And then what we actually do is we're working just alongside it. So you'd have your Petri dish close to the Bunsen flame on the actual worktop. Now, what's going to happen is any microbes that are present in the air that would normally just drop onto the surface of that agar plate, because we've got the heat from our Bunsen flame, it's going to basically create this current that carries the microbes in the air away, thereby preventing them dropping onto your agar plate, for example. Next one, we can flame the neck of the bottles. So by that, what we mean is that we're going to have our little flask and we literally just pass it through the top of that Bunsen flame. You don't hold it in there for several minutes. We literally just pass it through the, the actual neck of the Bunsen burner there. And that means that we are going to kill any bacteria present. Next one is about minimizing the risk of transfers from the air. If we're talking about a little Petri dish, obviously we've got those two parts to it. So you've got your lid and you've got your base. Now in the base is where we've got the agar. When we lift the lid, you're not going to lift the lid off, wave it around in the air over here, leaving the whole thing completely exposed. Lift it up as little as possible and for as short a time as possible. And the only other thing we could put on there is to sterilize equipment. Now, one thing to bear in mind is that because obviously sterilizing equipment does have a bit of an overlap with flaming neck on bottles, I wouldn't recommend using both of those in one answer looking for two different ideas. Go with two completely separate points if possible. Now, in terms of why we're going to carry out this process of sterilization, then if we go back to some real basics about microorganisms, they're going to grow anywhere that they have access to the carbon compounds that they need in order to carry out respiration, the nitrogen compounds they need to create their proteins, and obviously the right temperatures, etc. What we're doing in a lot of these microbiology practicals is giving them all of those potential things they need. So we've got to obviously make sure that we are careful, that we are using sterile equipment, etc. Otherwise, we could end up growing unwanted microbes alongside whatever we intended to grow. So to that end, when we are talking about our nutrient agar, so what we have there is the medium that contains all of these compounds necessary for growth. That's got to be sterilized along with any of the equipment, the Petri dishes, the flasks, whatever we're using there, they all must be sterile before we use it. 
and a typical way that we would sterilize these things is in an autoclave which is a specialist bit of lab equipment and we'll just heat it up to 121 and we'll leave it there for 15 minutes that'll kill anything that's living on there our next consideration then is what type of medium we will use and we've got two options available the one that you are probably more familiar with, the one that you will have almost certainly used in a practical, is the solid agar. So in order to actually create those little Petri dishes with the agar in there, what we've done is we've got the agar, we've melted it, and then we pour it into an empty Petri dish, put the lid on, leave it to set. There is a second option though of this liquid broth, and as the name suggests, this remains liquid. So it's just like the agar in terms of what it provides for our microorganisms, but this is going to stay as a liquid. Now, when we actually have microbes present, what you're going to notice is it goes more cloudy. So rather than being really quite clear in terms of what you see when you look through it, you're going to see lots more cloudiness in there. So the next step then, once we've obviously got everything all sterilized we've avoided any kind of contaminations from other things we now need to inoculate our actual medium and what we mean by inoculate is introduce our intended microorganism to that sterile media so how do we do this well we've got a range of different things that we can do here one of them is that we can actually carry out a process called streaking or create streak plates. Now, in order to do this, what we're going to have is a wire inoculating loop. So the wire inoculating loop is very simple. You've got this little handle and then on there, there's a little bit of wire with a little loop at the end of it. Hence, wire inoculating loop. And what we're going to do then is we would dip this, once it's been sterilized, into our culture medium. So that means we're going to end up with some of the bacteria on the little loop. And then what we do is we actually draw it out into a streak on the surface. So quite simply, all you do is you just kind of draw it out across the surface of the plate. So as you've done that, what we've done is just drag that microbe across the surface, lid goes back on and we incubate. Option two is a process called seeding. Now, this one quite simply is where we're going to be transferring a drop of our liquid medium onto the surface of the agar, and then we pour the agar in. So what we have is our little agar plate. You put a little drop of your actual culture medium onto the surface. Then we pour the agar on top. And what happens is it's all going to allow it to spread across. And then our plate should have a lovely lawn across the surface. Next one, spreading. So as the name suggests, what we have is our Petri dish, put a little drop of our culture medium onto there, and then we use one of these fun-filled little glass spreaders. So you put it on there, and then you basically twist it round in a circular little motion to spread that drop across the surface nice and evenly. We can use a swab as well. So this is typical for transferring microorganisms from a surface. So all we're going to do there is a little cotton swab. There's our surface of our plate. And then again, you can just wipe it across the surface of the agar to get that on there. Once we've done that, we need to then carry out the incubation part. And incubation is where we're going to basically stick it in an incubator. Before we do that though, we need to label our dish and this should include the date so that we know when that sample went into the incubator because it's not usual to have just one plate in there. And we're going to take the top of the dish to the bottom. Now, what we mean by that is that when we've got our little agar plate, you're not going to wrap tape right the way around to completely seal it. What we're going to do is we're gonna put a little loop of tape on one side, a little loop of tape on the other side, and it just stops the top falling off, okay? We're not creating anaerobic conditions because we don't want pathogens to grow. Once we've done that, flip it upside down and then we put it in the incubator, leaving it for a while to grow. We don't, however, incubate a 35 because that's all about encouraging human pathogen growth. Then about 24 to 36 hours later, we carry out our observation. Now, 
first rule of observing a Petri dish, do not open the Petri dish. The reason for that is obviously you don't necessarily know exactly what you've grown and opening up you are potentially exposing yourselves to whatever is on that plate. May not always be a good idea. So don't open the dish, but observe it between a day to a day and a half later. What we're looking at is the appearance of those colonies because different types of bacteria, they're going to grow with different colors, different textures, whether they're domed, they're flat, they've got crusty edges, they're smooth edges, etc. And all of that then allows us to work out what we have growing there. It's not gonna be the be all and end all, but at A-level, that's as far as we go. If you go on to university, do any kind of microbiology course, then you'll find out about other tests that we can do to formally identify that particular microbe. This level, we don't really care. Once we've finished identifying and recording all the information we would like off that dish, then we need to sterilize all used Petri dishes in the autoclave. That will then obviously kill off any microorganisms that are present within that culture. The last thing that we should really make a note of here is when we are carrying out these microbiology experiments, then we should also have a control alongside our test plates. Now that control will be obviously going through that same incubation process and it will have the nutrient medium just without any bacteria added to it. Now the whole idea of doing that is that we will be basically checking our aseptic technique because if on that plate that we've incubated as a control, we start getting bacterial colonies forming, we had contamination. So that means that we have almost certainly got contamination on our test plates as well, because we prepared them at the same time in the same way. Contamination on the control plate strongly suggests contamination on the test plates as well. As always, I suggest that you subscribe to my channel so you can actually find out when I upload the next video. And don't forget to head on over to the A-Level website so you can pull out any other resources that might support you in your study of A-Level Biology.